Hey guys, in this video we're going to be checking out this new micro from Diatone. It's the GTR90 and it's a H style frame you can see here. It's about 95 millimeters motor to motor and it's a little bit wider than it is front to back. And I actually like the way these fly. Uh, this is a pretty interesting design. You got the roll bar cage design here, but instead of it going straight back, it's going back at an angle and coming in closer in the back than in the front. And I guess that, that provides a little bit of protection to the electronics inside. So it's not, and I kind of like that design. It's, it's actually not too bad. Now the uh, components in here are very good. Um, well, first of all, let's talk about the frame. The bottom bottom part is, uh, the bottom plate is three millimeters thick. And even though the arms are a little bit skinny, I think that this is gonna hold up really well in a crash. Uh, it's gonna be very durable. Now back to the components in here. These are very, very good components. Um, actually, I'm pretty impressed with everything that's in here. First off, you know, they put a, a micro CCD camera in here. It's not a run cam Swift or Fox Gear uh, micro arrow. It's, uh, I believe it's uh, one of these new ones that I've seen from Mango. There's a lot of these new micro CCD cameras that are coming out now that are similar in size and form factor to the Micro Swift or Micro Arrow and have similar uh, similar uh, characteristics in terms of the image quality. And you'll see that in the FPV footage. It's it's not quite the same as the Micro Swift. It's a, the saturation levels are a little bit higher on the color, but the uh, light handling is seems pretty much identical. Light handling is very good and it's definitely a CCD sensor. 600 TV lines as well. And uh, I believe uh, if you wanted to swap this out for Microsoft, you could do that. It's the same. It should be the same width. Uh, we've got some really nice motors on here. I believe these are Sunny Sky motors. Uh, they're Diatone branded, but I think they're called the Edge Racing 1104 6000 KV motors. And so these are similar in size to the ones that are on the Lizard, I believe. Those are 1104 also 6,000 kV, but this whole system here is set up to run on, uh, well, it can go up to 4S. Now, they actually recommend flying this on 3S, which is what I did. However, everything in here can go 4S, although um, I think for the extra weight of a 4S battery that's going to be hanging underneath here, it's probably going to weigh more than the drone itself, and I'm not sure you're going to get that much more power from these 2-inch props. Um, anyway, so the motors are very good. I like that. Uh, the camera's very good. The flight controller is the Fury F4M. Uh, I'm not sure who makes that flight controller, but it's a F4 flight controller. It's got an F4 CPU plus uh, the ICM206 something gyro. Pretty good gyro, but it's um, sensitive. So I think it does up to 32K, I believe, or maybe it's 8K. I'm not 100 sure, but it's a very good gyro, and uh, you can do a very fast uh, PID loop and gyro loop. And because of that, they've actually soft mounted this flight controller. You see that they have these rubber grommets that go through these holes, and then it's mounted with these nuts here. Oh, again, again, over another soft mount over top of the ESC. And so they don't, they didn't soft mount the motors. Those are those are hard mounted. They soft mounted the flight controller, which is good here, and I had no issues with vibrations or oscillations or any kind of uh, fluttering from uh, the. Uh, from D loop uh, oscillations or D term oscillations. So it's it, actually, this is, I think, the way to go for uh, manuf manufacturers. If you guys are designing builds, mount, mount your flight controllers this way, soft mount like this, and you'll have less issues uh, with vibrations and <laughs> being able to fly without it freaking out when you take off. Now, the ESCs on here are 15 amp 4 and 1 ESCs, uh, BL Heli S, D Shot 600. Uh, they do burst up to 20 amps, so it's going to be plenty for this, even on 4S. Uh, the props on here, I, I'm not 100% sure I like these props. These look like the same design as the DYS 2030s. In fact, these are 2030 props. They're bullnosed. And the the guys at Redditon claim that this is a, a more balanced prop than, say, the Gemfan 2035s. not 100% sure I, I buy that. I didn't get any vibrations from the props, but they didn't sound so great in the air uh, from when I was flying it. So I'm going to switch these out, and I think that because of the way it's tuned, uh, I didn't really like the way it flew. It flew fine, uh, which, which by the way, it does come with uh, a tune out of the box, and I think that's what I like about Diatone is that they actually go and fly these things, test them out, 
and uh, you know get them reasonably in good shape before they actually ship it out. And I think that this is the difference between a company like Diatone. They kind of wait, you know. They don't come out. They don't put a lot of models up, but they kind of, you know, wait and see what's out there and see what's good and see what kind of components are good for their micro or whatever model they want to uh, put out. They do the research and development, and then they put out a good model. Unlike I think uh, this other company called SPC Maker, they make a lot of models, but I, you know the one model that I that I like the 95 GF was good, but then you know they've been putting out these newer models. I don't think they've done their research. They haven't done any tuning, and out of the box they don't fly. So I'm kind of um, going to start recommending to not go with that manufacturer anymore. I think that going with someone like Diatone here is probably the way to go because they're actually doing their homework and uh, you know putting together good components and actually flying it and making sure that it flies well out of the box. So it did come with a tune out of the box. It came with Betaflight 321, the latest version. actually had like the dynamic filter return that was totally configured out of the box and I'm pretty sure that's the way that, that all the retail ones are going to come uh, when they actually start selling in, in a couple weeks. This is actually a uh, pre-production version but I'm told that they are going to put the tune in there and it flew okay on the tune that they put in there but I think that the problem was these props I just don't like these props so I'm going to try some different props in a future video and you'll see that in the flight demo. Uh, there's another thing here that's kind of an interesting innovation is they put the current sensor you can see here on the XT30 connector and you can see there's a signal wire that goes back to the flight controller to so, so get your current reading on your OST. So that's kind of nice. I like that it's out here on the connector itself and it's shrink it's shrink wrapped. So um, definitely uh, I found that the numbers on the OST seemed a little off. I think it needs a little bit more I guess configuring. Um, plus I'm going to clean that up anyway. I just put a fluid stock and just the way they kind of came out of the box. But I think that they're going to need to do a little tweaking on that. But the numbers seem okay on the current but the battery voltage readings were kind of all over the place. So anyway. Um, another good component though, obviously here is the video transmitter which they put on the bottom and I do like the way they got this whole thing, whole stack put together. This video transmitter is actually a TBS Unify so uh, it's a very very good video transmitter. Now they didn't set it up for the um, smart audio uh, video transmitter like the changing the channels and stuff, at least I don't think they did because I couldn't figure out if, uh, if that was configured or not so I don't think it's set up that way, so you still have to use a button here to change your bands and channels. And then they have a single whip antenna that comes out of the bottom. Uh, the um, video transmitter does 25, 200 milliwatts, 500 milliwatts, and 800 milliwatts. So yeah, it's a, a very high-end video transmitter. I'm really surprised that they're putting that in here along with the flight controller and these motors at the price point that they're selling at, which is actually, I think it's about 170 bucks, might be less. And that's way cheaper than all the ones that are coming out from SPC Maker. So definitely recommending this one over any of the models that are coming out of SPC Maker for sure. Assuming that uh, I get a good tune out of this. And uh, that, well, we'll see that pretty soon in a future video anyway. So it does come with these prop guards if you want to put them on. But I'm not going to, I hate flying with prop guards anyway. So I'm never going to put these on. Uh, it's supposed to come with four of these like little arm bumpers. But I only got two for some reason. You can see, now you're probably wondering why, why they're missing. The production versions will have four of these bumpers on here, which is what you know you're going to want. This it'll, it'll protect the motor. It gives a little bit of uh, protection here against crashes uh, for the motor itself. And as you see in the back here, there the motor is more exposed. So those will be on there, and then um, uh, you definitely want those on there for sure for protection. And the other thing that I didn't like is the battery strap that was on here. It was too short for the the big battery, the 3S battery they wanted to use, so I just switched over to my rubber bands and they have a piece of silicone on the bottom that will grip the battery for you, so it held on no problem. I used a, uh, the, the 450 GNB 3S battery that I like to fly all my 2S uh, micros on. Another thing that you guys should be aware of is that it didn't come with a receiver or a battery, so I added a FlySky um, RX2A Pro micro receiver right there. And if you want to use iBus on this uh, F4 flight controller, you have to use uh, RX3, which is over here on the side, underneath the receiver. You can't really see that there. There's a diagram of the flight controller that's included in the documentation. You can check that out. UART1 over here is on this side here, and if you have a FreeSky receiver, then that's where you want to uh, connect that to. 
uh, but in my case, since I'm using uh, iBus and a FlySky receiver, I had to connect up to RX3, not a big deal. Okay, so let's show you what the weight of this is. I think it's about 70 grams. Okay, so it's coming in at about 70, almost 75 grams, so it's not too bad. It's uh, about the same weight or a similar weight as the Lizard. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show you the flight footage, uh, line of sight and FPV. It was on 3S. I am going to do other videos in the future, uh, probably 4S, and also I'm going to change these props out. I'm probably going to use the Hulky uh, 2040s because uh, I think that's going to have better flight characteristics. And so be on the lookout for those videos. Uh, this is not going to be out for a little while. Uh, I think this was uh, the recording of this video is November the 1st. Um, I've heard it's coming out on Banggood on November 10th, though, though sometimes they're delayed, so it might be uh, maybe towards more towards the middle of the month, and I think it's coming out a little bit later on Gearbest, so definitely be on the lookout for this one. This is definitely uh, a good model to uh, pick up if you're looking for uh, a, a, micro, a micro brushless with a lot of good components that are going to fly well, so I'm going to be doing some tweaking on this, and I'll have some more future videos, so stay tuned for those. Okay, you know, a little line of sight first. These props don't sound too bad. They sound okay. Right, let's do a punch out. All right, so it's uh, they're pretty loud. Uh, it's expected for a bull nose prop. I felt like they, they lost power kind of going up. I'll see how they fly as FPV. It's hard to tell and just doing line of sight. Does seem very to fly okay line of sight here. It's a little I don't know, I'm not sure if I like these props at all. Kinda they feel like they're not very responsive. Might have to try some different props a little later. Alright, let's bring it back here. Let's try some acro flips. Yeah, acro's fine. The tune that it came with uh, from the factory is pretty good, I think. No oscillations or vibrations. I just want to see what the, uh, how hot the motors are. Uh, not landing the dirt here. So we're just on 3S here, and the motors are pretty warm. Uh, for the Sunny Sky motors, this is pretty typical. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, it's not that bad, actually. I can, I can still hold on to the motors. I'm not sure how this is going to handle for us, although they said that this can handle for us. It's gonna, I'm pretty sure it's going to be running pretty hot. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a little FPV now. Okay, just a couple of thoughts on the uh, factory tune that comes uh, out of the box, and it to me it just seems like it has um, a little bit of a, too low of a P gain, and I think I'm going to have to raise that. Also, I think the I gain might be a little bit too too low as well. I think that's where the I feel like it's um, it doesn't, the controls don't feel as crisp crisp to me. So I think I'm more used to uh, more crisp controls on this. So I'm going to be raising the P and the I gain uh, for a future video. The other thing that I'm noticing here is that there's a little bit of video noise on the FPV, FPV feed here. It's, not, it's actually more noticeable in the DVR than it was in the goggles. Didn't, I don't remember actually seeing it in the goggles, but now, now I'm looking at the DVR feed. I do see a little bit of video noise. It's not bad, but you just, it does come up a little stronger when you um, throttle up. And uh, yeah, I crashed it because of the, I think the, the way the, the tuning is, I'm just not used to it. but. Uh, no problems, just uh, rearmed and took off again, and it flies just fine. The pops are, are pretty durable, the ones that uh, they, put on, they, they put on there. So, uh, at this point, I would just ignore all the numbers that are flashing on the screen. I'm going to be changing all the OSD settings. I don't think uh, it's uh, been properly tweaked, and so I'm going to be messing around with those a bit later. 
And you can see here, um, actually, even though the, the tune is not to my liking, I'm still uh, predictable enough and I'm confident enough that I'm going to actually try and uh, power loop these trees here. Um, basically, uh, without um, tweaking the pids at all. So, eh, you know, it's something I just wanted to try, and it's got plenty of power for that, so uh, why not?